So, last year I wrote a couple of Python scripts that used image recognition to automatically play some of the minigames from New Super Mario Bros. on the DS. And this year, I decided to take a crack at this idea once again, but with Mario Party DS minigames instead. But since you guys really enjoyed the New Super Mario Bros. videos I did, and since there's quite a few minigames that I have yet to automate, I thought it would be fun to once again revisit this concept, and to see what kind of minigames we can automate. And trust me, things are going to get crazy very quickly. So without any further ado, let's -a go! <laughs> Alright, so the first minigame we are going to be automating in this video is called Whack a Monty. As you could probably infer by the name, the goal of this minigame is to whack as many Monty moles on the head as you can, all within a 30 second time limit. And also, Luigi's here. <laughs> now like most of these minigames, it starts off really easy, but as the timer ticks down, it becomes virtually impossible to keep up with how many Monty Moles there are. So I'm hoping that this is the perfect minigame to use image recognition for. To get started, I created a brand new Python script to handle this minigame, and I decided to use the project I wrote last year in order to manage these new scripts. This will save me some time, and keep everything nice and organized. From there, I began writing out some code to load in an image of a Monty Mole, so that we can click on them when they are detected on the screen. But before we could do that, I first wrote some simple code to locate the Monty Mole texture on the bottom screen of the DS. And to test if this code was actually working correctly, I made it so that the mouse would automatically move to the center of each Monty Mole that is located. And it works just as you'd expect. Then the only thing left to do was to add some code to click on the Monty Mole after the mouse moves on top of it. A score of 57 is pretty good, but I still wasn't quite satisfied. So I decided to spend some more time optimizing this script. One thing that I did in order to make the script faster was to only have it search for one Monty Mole at a time, instead of every single one. And this managed to push the score all the way up to 85. But I really wanted to get the score over 100. So I manually adjusted the speed of each mouse click to be the absolute bare minimum required for the game to recognize it. Doing this resulted in this run. I'm really happy that we managed to get the score over 100, so I think it's time for us to move on to the next minigame. <laughs> Alright, so this minigame is called Snowball Slalom. The goal of this minigame is to try and roll a snowball down a slippery track filled with obstacles as fast as possible. If you do run into an obstacle though, such as a rock or a penguin, the snowball shrinks and is slowed down dramatically so avoiding collisions is extremely important. To get started on this minigame script, I first wrote out some code to move the cursor as efficiently as possible, so that the snowball could roll really quickly. Now just like with whack a -Monty, I had to adjust the timing to maximize the speed, and if the cursor moved too fast, it actually ended up slowing down the snowball more than it would speed it up. But after getting that done, I started to face some new problems. See, in order to avoid the obstacles on the track, I need some way of detecting where the snowball currently is, and how to move it in order to avoid the obstacles. This is a huge challenge, because if I move the snowball too far to the sides, then it risks running into the sides of the track as well. So my first attempt at this problem involved locating each rock, and trying to swerve the snowball away from it. This sort of worked, but it ended up having so many problems that I ended up scrapping the idea. And that was when I thought of something else. What if we can use an AI algorithm to generate the best possible path for the snowball to follow? To give some context to how this idea could work, one of the projects I worked on last year was creating a neural network to play Geometry Dash. And I ended up using a method of evolution in order to improve the performance of my model. This involves randomly altering each player and then taking whichever one makes it the furthest to be the basis for the next generation of players. Well, in our case, we could do something similar. 
I could make it so that each game the Python script would move the snowball forward until it hits an obstacle. And then, the next time, it will take the same path, but right at the end it will move in a random direction, left or right, to see if it can make it further, until it reaches the end. That way we won't actually need to know the exact locations of each obstacle, but instead, when the snowball stops moving. With this idea in mind, I began rewriting the scripts, and in order to detect when the snowball is moving, I wrote some code to track the position of the snowball on the distance meter on the side. And if it gets stuck for more than a few frames, the attempt stops and will restart as soon as the timer runs out. So with our script now complete, it's time to see how fast our program can complete the track. I am super happy with our time, and it was really cool to use an idea from one of my old programs to accomplish it. And since we used both image recognition and artificial intelligence, I want to take a moment to talk about something that can help you learn about both of these things and more. And that is this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. If you haven't heard of Brilliant before, it's a learning website that's dedicated to providing you with fun and engaging courses that cover a wide variety of STEM topics. From computer science and programming to AI and neural networks, Brilliant has it all. And a lot of the skills that Brilliant teaches I use in my projects all of the time. And if you are curious about programming, data structures, algorithms, and much, much more, I highly recommend the Thinking in Code course because it helps build a solid computer science foundation that can be used to learn many other important STEM skills. So to take advantage of everything that Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days, then visit brilliant.org slash codenoodles, or simply click the link down in the description below. And if you're one of the first 200 people to do so, you will get a full 20% off of Brilliant's premium annual subscription. A serious thank you to Brilliant for continuing to support the channel, and for allowing me to keep doing what I love for you guys. But now, let's move on to the next minigame. This minigame is called Danger bob -omb, Danger. In this minigame, your goal is to protect this red bob -omb from being ignited by moving it around and avoiding the fireballs and Bowser's breath. This minigame is extremely difficult to last long in, so let's see if image recognition can help us. To begin, I wrote some code to locate the fireballs, and then using some trigonometry, I calculated the angle between each fireball and the player. I then used this angle to push the mouse away from the closest fireball, in order to protect our bob -omb. This code ended up working, but inevitably the bob -omb just ends up getting trapped at the edges of the screen, since there's nothing to move it away. So in order to fix this, I tried writing a function to curve the mouse away from the edges, and it did work in certain circumstances, but it ended up having issues once it got stuck in a corner, or when it would push the bob -omb into a fireball by accident. So what I ended up doing was to actually treat the edges of the map like fireballs. To do this, I created a couple of loops to add fireball positions to outline the edge of the map. This means that the bob -omb's could now properly avoid getting stuck at the edges of the map. But there was still one last thing to worry about though, and that's Bowser. Whenever Bowser shoots his breath, his eyes open up. So I wrote some code to locate his orange eyes, and if it's able to, then I create a row of fireballs at the eye's X position, so that the program can avoid the breath. So let's see how long our program can now last. I know this isn't a super high score, but this minigame has been an absolute pain to try and automate. But I'm still very happy with what we were able to accomplish. So with that minigame complete, we are now done for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed these minigame videos, and if you would like to see more of them, just let me know in the comments down below. And sorry about my voice, I've been sick for the past few weeks, but I'm feeling much better now. My voice is just very deep. 
Regardless, though, thank you guys as always for watching and for your support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye